had to cut a little bit short. Uh, there will be additional time for you, though, uh, at a later point in time. Uh, but it is time for member statements at this point in time, and I recognize a member from Ottawa Centre. Uh, this is Mental Health Week in Ontario, and I want to, with this speech, tip my hat and offer my sincere thanks to every single mental health worker, every single advocate for mental health in the province of Ontario. Thank you for all you do. For a minute, Speaker, I actually want people watching this clip to pause this clip and follow the link that will be embedded in this video to a terrific song that was recently composed to honour the work of street health workers in the city of Ottawa. It's called Rise Up Strong, Speaker, and I want to quote one verse from the song. It says, we're working in a system that's bursting at the seams. The money, the resources, there's so few and far between. But poor is not on purpose, and illness is not a crime. There's a lot that's got to change. Rise up, people. It's time. When I think of that verse in that amazing song, Speaker, I think about a tragedy in our community because we lost a street health worker, and his name was Carl Reinboth. He worked at the Somerset West Community Health Centre. On April 23rd, Carl lost his life. He was killed by someone in mental health crisis. And when I think about the legacy Carl and so many other folks at the Somerset West Community Health Center have to offer to us, I want to make an urgent plea that we not think about a ramp up of police resources for mental health issues. As Theresa Tam, Canada's, mental, mental, um, Canada's officer for public health has said, we are not going to police our way out of mental health crisis. We need resources to the Somerset Community Health Centre, and their number for crisis, folks, Thank you. is 613-447-0029. Call Thank it you if you need much. help. Thank you very much. Thank you, Further member statements, the member from Mississauga East, Cooksville. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise today to call on the federal government of Canada to immediately secure our international and interprovincial borders against deadly variant of concern. Just a single person, Speaker, just a single person carrying the UK variant of COVID-19 into Canada resulted in hundreds of infections and over 70 deaths at Roberta Place. Over 12 million people have entered Canada by land air since March 2020. According to the Toronto Star, over 5,000 people have tested positive for COVID-19 on arrival since February of this year, and almost one-third of them carried a variant of concern into Canada. Speaker, some will, uh, some will say that only a small percentage of cases in Ontario can be linked directly to travel, but I firmly believe that the only acceptable number of cases and variants of concern coming through our borders is zero. The federal government needs to start listening and act now to protect Ontarians. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Kiwetna. Because, Speaker, uh, in March, uh, Pekanjigam Chief and Council voted to remove the OPP from the community. They took action over serious allegations of assault involving the service and uh, community members. The day after the OPP left, Indigenous Services Canada removed nursing staff from Pekanjigam, even though Pekanjigam had its own police, First Nation police and peacekeepers. Speaker, 3,800 people live in Pekanjigam, and it's almost comparable to the size of Solicote, a municipality that has its own hospital. Pekanjigam did not have 24-hour nursing services because the feds had concerns about their community safety. Chief Dean Owen said, the more we talk, the more we are resolved to move as quickly as possible towards running our own standalone police service. And, uh, and the, due to the negative impacts of the nursing station, we are looking forward to taking over our own health services. It is evident that these systems are tied to each other uh, at the government level, leaving our community helpless and the solution out of control." End quote. Can you imagine, Speaker, the government shutting down your hospital in the evening and overnight because police wasn't available in the middle of a pandemic? Speaker, pulling out essential services in Pekanjigam is racism and colonialism in action, and the double standard is no longer acceptable. We thank the peacekeepers, the rights holders, and the leadership in Pekanjigam for your step towards nationhood. Miigwech. 
Member statements. The member for Markham Thornhill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to talk about community spirit during this unprecedented time. The Canadian Tamil Congress and the Tamil Chair Inc. spearheaded an extraordinary initiative to create the chair in Tamil studies at the University of Toronto. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank President Sivan Ilanko from CTC, writer Apathurai Muthulingam, and all the members and volunteers who worked with the global Tamil community to reach its target. With over 3,800 supporters, they have raised $3 million to this position. This is a first community-funded chair at the University of Toronto. Tamil language is over 3,000 years old. It is the oldest and longest surviving classical language in the world. Spoken by more than 80 million people, this creation of a Tamil chair will leave a mark in our history. When the Tamil fled Sri Lanka due to the war, 300,000 of them escaped to Ontario, Canada as a safe haven. They fled because of embracing the identity as a Tamil was not accepted. But here today, we are showcasing that the Tamil community is rebuilding what we lost for half a century. Now the Tamil studies at the University of Toronto will institutionally continue the richness of our culture, language, and heritage that was almost systematically lost in Sri Lanka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. And today, normally, I'd be in Serpent River or another community on Red Dress Day with my tobacco in hand. I would like to deliver this message to communities. Red Dress Day is just one way that we can demonstrate that we have not forgotten the mothers, sisters, and daughters that have been taken from us before their time. To those left behind, the loss can be highly traumatic and long-lasting. The effect upon entire communities can be like waves that overwhelm us if we allow it to do so. That is why it is important to stand together, shoulder to shoulder, as sisters, brothers, parents, elders, and youth, to ensure the tragic loss losses we experience are recognized as significant and real. It is essential that we ensure that the issues of the missing and lost Indigenous girls and women receives the national attention and actions that it deserves. We must ensure that we draw the attention of the world to the gendered and racialized nature of violent crimes against Indigenous women. As well, we must ensure that the issue is not seen as to be simple, simply a women's issue, but rather an issue of, for all people of every gender, race, and nationality. By wearing red on this day, we signify that these loved ones are not forgotten, but remain in our hearts for eternity. Support and participation in this movement is essential if we are to build a future in which Indigenous girls and women can focus on their future rather than looking over their shoulders in fear. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This upcoming Sunday is Mother's Day, and I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge the su that supporting women and mothers is a tangible benefit for the province. Access to childcare, education, counseling, or good jobs is essential to making sure women are included in the economic recovery the province needs. I am lucky not only to be the mother of four wonderful children, but also to have my mother by my side, living with us and being part of our daily life. I owe it to her in a large part to be here today. I am certain that all of us in this house know of women and mothers that have made incredible contribution to our families and communities over the last year. Women in sectors such as healthcare and social services, education, accommodation and food services have continued to work on the front lines throughout this pandemic. While some continued to put their lives at risk for our sakes, others were forced to leave their job to take on childcare and schooling at home, once again putting others ahead of themselves. So this Mother's Day, let us all show extra love and appreciation for the women and mothers in our lives, and let us commit to using the abilities we have here in this house to do better by them. Wishing a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in this house and to all the mothers in Ontario. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next member's statement, the member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Speaker. The month of May is Jewish Heritage Month in Ontario and Canada. 
formally recognized by the Ontario Legislature in February 2012 and by the Federal Parliament in March 2018, Jewish Heritage Month provides us with a unique opportunity to learn, share, and celebrate the history and culture of Jewish Canadians. Canada is home to the fourth largest Jewish population in the world, and Jews have played a vital role in every sector of our society, establishing themselves long ago as crucial and vibrant contributors to our multicultural society. Unfortunately, this community continues to be the target of unwarranted attacks of hatred and anti-Semitism. According to B'nai B'rith, there were 2,610 anti-Semitic incidents in Canada last year, an 18.6 per cent increase over 2019, and this translates to the equivalent of seven incidents on an average day, every day, making the Jewish community our country's, one of our country's most targeted minority groups. And according to B'nai B'rith's annual audit of anti-Semitic incidents for 2020, about one in 10 of them involved the promotion of conspiracy theories, vandalism, or violence related to the COVID pandemic. Sadly, some 44% of violent incidents last year were COVID-related, and half of those were against visibly observant Jews who were denied service at various retailers, spat on, assaulted, randomly pelted by items, and shot with air pellets. Speaker, last October, Ontario adopted the International Holocaust Remembrance Working Definition of anti-Semitism, and our government wants to stand with the Jewish community and every other community to defend their rights and their freedoms. Thank you. Thank you. The next member statement, the member for Brampton Centre. Thank you and good morning, Speaker. Um, last week, Speaker, I held a small business forum with businesses from across Brampton Centre, and many of them raised very troubling concerns um, about this government's lack of support for small businesses in our community. I heard from businesses who are facing bankruptcy, frankly, Speaker, because they haven't been able to get any support from this government. I spoke with driving instructors who are not able to qualify for the small business grant um, because of the eligibility criteria. I've also spoken with folks in the personal care services um, who are at their wit's end with lockdown after lockdown that has not provided them the support they need as a small business to continue um, to sustain their business while keeping their doors closed. The expenses for many of these businesses, Speaker, are piling up and this government is failing those businesses. I've also connected with independent producers and ethnic media who are wondering why they haven't received any supports from this government through an ethnic media stabilization fund, something that New Democrats have been calling on this government to implement since the start of this pandemic. It's unfortunate, Speaker, that Brampton businesses are being forced to close their doors and are waiting and waiting weeks and weeks on end to hear even an email reply from this, business, uh, this, this government with respect to their small business grant. I encourage this government to step up to the plate, help support businesses in Brampton and across Ontario, get them the supports they need so they don't have to close their doors forever. Thank you. The next member's statement, the member for Mississauga Centre. Sure. Today, my beautiful and strong grandmother in Poland is turning 90 years young. I miss her very much, as I have not been able to see her in two years now due to travel restrictions and keeping her health and safety in mind. Thankfully, technology is a wonderful thing, and I was able to see her via Zoom to personally wish her a happy birthday and even toast her with champagne. Joanna Gratkowska, maiden name Dudek, was born on May 5, 1931. She gave birth to five children, two of whom passed away, unfortunately. Widowed in her 30s, she lived through the Second World War and the communist regime, raising three ch children as a single mom, including my mom, Anna. To me, she is the embodiment of courage, perseverance, generosity, and motherhood. I fondly remember my summer and sometime winter holidays spent at Babcia's house in Poland, playing in the fields, collecting flowers, feeding the rabbits and chicken, watching grandma make pierogies, and of course, attend the Holy Mass religiously every Sunday. My grandma is a great orator and storyteller. She passed on to me and my brother her memories of war and hardship, but also her wisdom in having faith in God and always helping those less fortunate than us. Even though she struggled as a single mom, she took in an orphan whom she raised as her own. So today, even though I'm thousands of miles away, my heart and my thoughts are with my babcia Asha, 
Babciu, żyj nam zdrowo i długo. Kocham Cię bardzo. 100 lat. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Don Valley North. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Springtime typically signifies new beginnings, warm sunshine, garden growing. Yet during the third wave of the pandemic, many of my constituents say they feel stuck inside, yelling for outdoor activities, wishing they could visit their loved ones. They are tired of the restrictions and the sacrifice required to help stop the spread of the virus. Yes, COVID-19 fatigue is real, I understand. However, as doctors and nurses continue to walk around the clock on the front line with COVID-19 patients in hospitals, and especially in the ICUs, they helped us overcome the darkest day of this pandemic. The fatigue the experience is overwhelming and exhausting. Our gratitude for their sacrifice and service is endless. We must show them our support. Action always speaks louder than words. Speaker, I ask all Ontarians to act selflessly and comply with the stay-at-home order with these healthcare heroes in mind. It is our best opportunity to help them save lives. Speaker, together we look forward in hope and courage to the better days ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements this morning. It is